Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, you are going to learn how to integrate a Spring with JPA. JPA stands for Java Persistence API. I have created this project, a Spring Hibernate integration using annotations in previous video tutorial. So I am going to convert this project into a Spring JPA integration. So let's copy this project and and make another copy of this project in the same workspace and I would give the project name as a spring JPA integration using annotations so basically in this tutorial I will complete the coding part and next tutorial I will explain the each and every piece of the code so let's close this previous project and let's open this project so as as we know that hibernate is the one of the implementer of jpa and there are some more i mean framework like avt is uh, hibernate these are the implementer of jpa now in dog class basically dog class api currently we had in previous tutorial we had implemented using hibernates so this code i am going to delete and here we'll use we'll complete this api, this api in the fashion of jpa so the api we are going to complete in in few seconds now if you want to work with the api i mean jpa then you require to add first of all a spring dependency jar which already we have added in this user defined library you need to add hibernate lib hibernate jar as well so those things already i have added and third thing you will have to add a spring aop related jar so four jars you need to add which belongs from the spring aop that is spec j jar spec jrt jar or spec j weaver jar and aop alliance jar this jar belongs from the spring aop so when you work with the jpa then jpa api is especially api which api is going to make some change on the database side so those apis always work inside the transactional context so and in this video tutorial we are going to while writing the api we are going to use at the rate transactional annotations and at the rate transactional annotations internally uses aop so that's why you require to add aop related jars in your class path now primary file is the beans.xml so here majorly you need to make change and second file is the doc class and rest of the code almost would be the same so if i talk about the beans.xml then data source is still be required uh, next thing we have config configured hibernate template template so this one i'm going to remove this is not required at all hibernate template is not required at all so i have removed session factory is not required still i would like to keep for some time and just for time being i have just commented uh, if you want to work with the JPA, then make sure that your XML doc type contains, I mean, namespace like uh, TX. TX is namespace, uh, I mean, XML namespace which is provided for the transaction management. So, TX, using TX namespace, I'm going to use this annotation, annotation driven. And this guy is going to take attribute is called something is called proxy target class and this one I'm going to make true because in this application I'm going to use at the rate transactional to manage the transactions and at the rate transaction basically internally use proxy objects so to make enable proxy object you need to uh, make this attribute as a true now 
to work with the JPA, he required uh, something which called that is very important element in JPA that is called entity manager factory. So to create a entity manager factory, a Spring has provided a class bin class is called local container entity manager factory bin. So let's try to search this class by pressing Control Shift T. Search for the local container. So I'm telling you about this class local container entity manager factory bin. So we need to basically configure this class in our XML file. So let's copy qualified name of this bin class and go to this bins.xml and here we, we are going to configure this bin class bin id and we need to specify the class name with qualified class name. Now id I am going to specify entity manager factory and I would give the e as a small. Now this entity class this bin class contains some mandatory properties and those properties we have to inject. So first property we have a data source and this will refer to the data source which already we have configured this data source. So this is the first mandatory property that we have injected using setup based dependency injection. Now next property we are going to talk about that that is called property and if you go to the, this class then you may search for something in this class extend this class right so you may search for packages to a scan so let's search so we are not getting so let's search here So here the packages to a scan and this is the kind of array. So here you can say packages to a scan and inside the property already I taught you how to inject array. So we have an array type to uh, inject array and here array can take a value attribute and here we are going to list out all our entity class. So in this example, we have a only one entity class. So let's say specify if you have a n number of entity class, then all entity class you will have to list out here like this. Now after specifying this property, next property I would like to configure is called something is called JPA vendor adapter. So property and name equal to uh, I would like to say here I'm going to configure an internal bin so inside the property I would like to write bin and I don't need to we don't need to specify ID because this is an internal bin and that uh, bin is called hibernate JPA vendor adapter so press control shift T and search for the hibernate Ivernet JPA vendor adapter. So Ivernet JPA vendor adapter. And let's copy a qualified name of this class. So right now just I'm completing the coding part. Next video tutorial I will explain you each and every piece of the code. And here I would say JPA vendor adapter property name I have given JPA vendor adapter if you go to this class then you might get this property if you don't get this yeah if you don't get this property in this class then that might be available on the super class so this class extends this class so here you might search for this property yeah 
this property is here and you may get the corresponding setter method of this property so here in super class contains setter method of this property so sub class has responsibility to inject this variable so that's why we are written this now next property i'm going to write that is called jpa properties if you go to this class and uh, you may go to the super class of this class and here you can get jpa something is called search for the jpa properties look at it jpa properties so basically we need to inject this one and this is type of properties so let's configure this guy as, as well so properties and this property is a type of properties so properties we can con configure using props tag inside the props we have a prop tag and this prop has a so these things directly we can copy from here itself so in uh, in, in previous tutorial when we learned how to configure a spring with a spring with hibernate then these things we have used so let's copy these things here itself so directly i'm gonna copy here so here we have used hbm2 ddl auto update so here expected values are update create create drop and validate so update means uh, exist, existing table will be there itself if you specify create then existing table will be drop and re that will be recreated so previous data we may loss so that's why i have given update now so sql so as i told you in spring with hibernate integration so sql basically hibernate or jpa has capability to generate sql query on the fly for you and those SQL query, if you want to see on the uh, while running the application on the Eclipse console, then you need to make this flag as a true. While generating this query, if you want to look those queries in the fo formatted manner, then make this flag as true. Format SQL. So this is self-explanatory. So almost we have configured this beam, local container entity manager factory beam. Now next thing we are going to configure is called next bin we have to configure is called transaction manager bin so id and you need to specify the class as well so so external configuration things almost we have done now now go to the dog class and here we can declare a property is called private something is called entity manager entity manager entity manager and declare the setter meter of this guy Now here before this property, this property I'm going to annotate it as at the rate persistence context. So I'm going to use at the rate persistence context. Now we have an entity manager and here we can write entity manager dot persist method and directly you can save this entity class. So up to here coding part we have completed, the rest of the things I am going to cover in the next video tutorial. So guys please please follow my second video tutorial so that you will have end to end understanding how to integrate JPA, uh, Spring with JPA. So see you in next video tutorial. Thank you so much.